Hello, this is CK Prowl7 with another commentary for Disney Heroes vs. Villains, this time round 5. We start off with Buzz Lightyear vs. Long John Silver. Uh, this was an interesting fight. By the time we saw John Silver at the Galactic Federation headquarters on planet Turo. We see the Grand Councilwoman, and then there's Jim, and Buzz Lightyear. You know, I figured... Hold on, let me turn this down a little. I figured since if you're going to use Zurich, you're going to have to use Buzz Lightyear, so yeah. Great to see him in the series. Uh, not much else to say about this fight, other than it was well edited and all. Like, what's about to come up right here, I think. Yeah, like right there, when Silver just blasted through the door. And like Mr. Puff, I wonder, where is everyone else? Are they just sitting back and watching the fight, or... What? I don't know. And then there's Screw. I wonder how long he's going to last in this war. Because every time he's in a fight, he usually ends up losing. Because of how little bit of footage he has. And then Jim and Silver meet. I mean, seriously, even though Silver is the main antagonist in Treasure Planet, he's still an anti-hero. And... Like I said in my last commentary, how are you going to treat him in this series? And Silver just leaves. Alright, now we have uh, Milo and Kia versus Lady Tremaine. You know, when I first heard this on the forum, I too did not know how this is going to work, because they these characters have nothing in common. But it edits very well. Because, you know, now that Tremaine has the wand... By the way, I noticed that one scene from the Atlantis sequel. I'm just kind of watching this right now. Seriously, Milo, your girlfriend's being abducted by a wicked stepmother, and all you do is just stand there. If I were you, I would probably have tackled her, and knocked the wand out of her hand, and meddled with the magic. I mean, I don't know, I don't get it. Like, maybe he's under- maybe Tremaine put him under a spell where he can't move at all? I mean, that would make a little more sense. And where did Morgana come from? I mean, that was just... She just popped right out of nowhere. Now we have Pocahontas versus Rourke. And I will say, this is pretty funny right here, where Rourke is laying in bed and complaining he just needs 10 more minutes, but Ratcliffe says he needs, he needs to go out and fight. And of course we have Pocahontas talking to Grandmother Willow. And again, another fight I did not... I was not sure how it was going to work. But it does work. It, it was very well edited. And of course they start burning down the forest. And she starts climbing a tree. The tree that's burning down. But I remember Mr. Buff said something that he thinks that Grandmother Will is dead, but technically, isn't she a spirit? In other words, can't she just move from tree to tree? And of course, John Smith pops out and saves them. And that must be one powerful gun that could shoot down a large stalactite like that.
And of course, Warwick is still alive, which is good, because many people just kill him off way too early in many tournaments. Alright, now we have Timon and Pumbaa versus Alameda Slim. This was one fight I was actually excited to see when I first heard it. Mainly because Timon and Pumbaa are a couple of my favorite hero sidekicks when it comes to Disney. And it gives Alan and Slim some screen time. And finally, the Willy Brothers show up, because in every tournament Slim is shown, you never see the Willy Brothers. And of course there's Junior, the Bison. And you know, when I first was thinking about this tournament, I mean, I noticed you some scenes of Timon and Pumbaa from the first and the second Lion King movie, but I was kind of wondering, are you going to use footage from the Lion King 1 and a half and possibly the Timon and Pumbaa television series? Because, you know, they have quite a bit of footage and all that, so, yeah. And this is funny right here. Boy, does he need a hobby. And, of course, Scar is being a creeper. Alright, now we have um, O'Malley and the Alley Cats versus Cruella de Vil. Of course, we have Edgar, who has captured Duchess and Kittens. And just like in Disney vs. Non Disney Villains, he's working with Cruella. Seriously, what does Cruella have against cats? I mean, she has issues with dogs already, but seriously. And of course, there's Jasper and Horace. Well, Jasper anyway, but... Okay, that, there's Horace. And then the Alley Cats come to the rescue. Pretty good editing there. I will say the Aristocats, when I was a kid, it was one of my favorite Disney films. I mean, it's not so much now, but it's still a classic. But unfortunately, Cruella wins. And they escape. And they retreat. Now, now this fight, I thought, this has got to be my favorite fight in this round. This one and the next one. Hercules versus Yzma and the Animals. Just like many other people thought, when I first heard this fight was going to happen, I was thinking that Yzma would either turn the, soul, the guards into the monsters from Hercules, you know, like the Hydra, or the monsters from the Zero to Hero Son, you know, like the Armanthian Boar, and that Serpent, and the Minotaur, and the Gorgon, or that she was going to turn them into the animals they turned into in the Emperor's New Groove movie. I did not expect this. Wait, hold on. Yeah, this right here. This is such a cool idea, because you chose five Disney animal villains that have, like, very little footage in each movie they're from, that would never make it long in the series, but you found a place to put them. I mean, this was such a neat idea. Now, of course, yeah, we have um, the Black Bear from The Fox and the Hound, Sabor the Leopard from Tarzan, uh, the Hammerhead Shark is from The Little Mermaid 2, the Wolf is from Peter and the Wolf, which I believe was a segment that came on um, Melody Time, I think it was. Either that or make my music. And of course, Rano, the deer, is from Bambi. So yeah, this is a well thought out fight right here. And it's not just Hercules fighting, Pegasus and Phil are also fighting, like right here. And there goes Rano. I'm guessing that's the end of him, along with the shark and the wolf. And Sabor and the bear escape, I believe. So, in other words, we're going to see the bear... I mean, I know the bear is in the next round, and what about Sabor? I mean, are we going to see her again? And yes, Sabor is a female. I just found that out. Okay, now this is my other favorite fight right here. Mulan and the Beast versus Forte. The Beast, the escaping from Forte, finds Mulan. And Mulan goes to save Quasimodo, and hearing that he left him behind. 
Seriously, Beast. I mean, yes, we know Belle's in danger and all, but I'm pretty sure she'd rather be a hostage a little longer than to hear that you just left behind a innocent man and an innocent boy who just got tormented by an evil pipe organ. And of course, back at the castle, Forte is torturing Quasimodo. But then Mulan comes to the rescue. I will say, this, along with the last fight, was probably my favorite fight in this round because it was so well thought out, I thought. And I could see what History Buff means by thinking that Mulan and Quasimodo would make an interesting crossover. Even though I'm not a total fan of crossing over di male and female characters of Disney films and all, if you know what I mean. But so it's a neat idea. Oh yeah, and I noticed that one scene is from Mulan too. Yes, I know my scenes pretty well, because I know my movies very well. And then Beast bursts in. We knew you can count on ya. Still nice editing there. And I guess some people would think of this as cheating, but it's really not because... Because, I mean, yeah, the Beast is fighting Forte, just like in the movie, but Mulan and Quasimodo are also fighting him as well. Because, yeah, Mulan is the one that cuts the chain, and Quasi pushes him over, and Beast is the one that throws the piano at him. So, yeah. They all work together as a team to take him out. And I will say, along with Frollo, Facilier, and the Horn King, Forte has another very epic death scene. And finally, a Disney villain gets killed in this series. Well, I mean, unless you count the Hammerhead Shark, the Wolf, and Rano. Which, yeah, they also got killed, but seriously, you know, the first official villain in the series gets killed. And Quasimodo's free. And I like this bit right here, Beast apologizes to Quasi and all. I can see them being being friends and all, for some reason. Because, you know, people treat them horribly and all because they're out of appearance. Now for the epilogue, where the native lands is being burned, all thanks to Rourke. Pocahontas and John Smith join up with um, the Denahi from Brother Bear. Which is funny, because the Disney Villain Wars, they treated Denahi as a villain, which he is sort of the main antagonist in Brother Bear, but not really a villain. And then Peter Pan joins up with Robin Hood, which I will say, this is a very good idea for a team up right here, because, I mean, they got they both kind of dress alike, if you'll notice that, because, you know, they both wear similar hats, with the feathers and all. And, oh jeez, another sad scene. You know, it's just like in um, those ASPCA commercials you see on television, it's with the sad animals and all. And then there's Madame Medusa. With Grilla. I love that bit where she's scared of the evil queen just pops out of nowhere. And in the underworld, Hades summons some. Well, hold on. Yeah, Hades summons some new allies, which are all sequel villains Zira, Saluk, Marine Del Rey, Sarouche, and Eric Holstrom, aka Odin. All sequel villains. And of course, we have Aladdin with Hercules and Donald and Goofy. And is still upset about you know, losing Jasmine, but he joins him to go on this quest. And of course we have the Atlanteans, along with Milo and his friends, going out to save Kida. And when I first saw this, I was thinking, is this really the end? Because it's only round five, I mean, there still should be like, what, six more rounds left at least? Maybe seven, eight? I don't know. And of course, the mice find the person that sent him the message in the bottle, and it's Lilo, of all people. Which is not a bad thing, because... Yeah, I mean, I like Lilo and Stitch. So it makes sense for her to accompany with the mice. And they all go out to find Stitch and to know what happened to him. And Basil suspects that a certain rat is up to this.
And this right here is the most awesome part right here. Maleficent gathers all the villains together to reveal the master plan. To summon the almighty Chernabog. And I just love this bit right here. All the vil minor, all the lesser evil villains are all like, You can't be serious! But the other big baddies are like, you know, are all excited and all for this plan. Nothing can stand in their way. Now I'm just wondering, how do you use Chernabog in this? Because, like, what kind of a hero can defeat him? I'm wondering. I mean, I guess maybe Zeus or someone like that. And that brings another thing. What about the Firebird? I mean, are you going to bring uh, him, well, it, in the series eventually? I'd like to see what you have planned for it if you do decide to use it. So yeah, this is my commentary for round five, and I will be bringing up the next one.